Wireless Network Wireless Network is an invention of the new era. With the help of wireless technology, we can transfer data from one device to another without using a cable. Of late, wireless technology has gained popularity since more and more people began to use laptops, tablets and smartphones. Now, these devices have become an unavoidable part of modern life. All these devices can be carried easily from one place to another. Today, we are living in a community where internet has become a way of life. It's no longer treated as a luxury. Rather, it's become a need and a necessity to get an internet connection to the devices like personal computers, laptops, tablets, smartphones, etc. Consequently, this universal need for connectivity has increased the importance of wireless networks. In fact, all of us would have used wireless networks sometime or the other. For example, if a friend of yours asks for a certain music stored in your mobile phone to be given to him, how will you give it to him? You may use infrared or Bluetooth option. Here, we can send files from one device to another quite easily and without using a tangible connection. Moreover, it's practically difficult to use the cables as in when we need to transfer any data. Let's consider another example. The LAN phones that we have been using earlier were connected with cables, which carried a communication to the telephone exchange. It limits our mobility while on the phone. For it was impossible for us to continue the communication while we leave the house and travel away to another place. However, with the emergence of mobile phones, it has brought a revolutionary change to this situation. Today, we can use mobile phones anywhere at any time. We can continue our communication even when we travel. Remember that you should not be the driver yourself when you use the mobile phone. Hope this example would have explained to you the advantages and scope of wireless network. Radio Frequency Signals If the cables are not used, how do we communicate in a wireless environment? In other words, if no cables are used, what is the medium of transmission in a wireless network? Have you ever heard of radio frequency signals? These are also called as RF signals. Radio frequency signals are the medium of transmission in a wireless environment. Before we attempt to learn about wireless networks, it's wise to know the basics about radio frequency signals. The frequency range of radio frequency signals varies from 30 kHz to 300 gigahertz. RF signals fall under the category of electromagnetic waves. Hope you already know that even the light is an electromagnetic wave. Unlike the light, the radio frequency signals are invisible. These radio frequency signals are widely used to transmit messages from one device to another. You must be familiar with the concept of FM radio. FM radio stations use radio frequency signals to broadcast programs. Very often, the names of the radio stations include the frequency that they use. For instance, 91.9 MHz frequency is used by Radio Mango, whereas 93.5 MHz frequency is used by Red FM. Similarly, television stations also use radio frequency signals to telecast programs. We can use radio frequency signals in setting up wireless networks for computers. Lots of offices and organizations actually use wireless network to connect all the computers in the office to a network. In fact, it requires some special devices instead of the ones that we use in wired networks. In a wireless network, in order to send data, the minimum requirement is the network interface card designed for wireless networks. Unlike the NIC used in the wide networks, NICs in wireless network use antenna instead of RJ45 connector. RF signals are transmitted 
and received with the help of antenna. Now you can see on the screen two computers connected with similar NIC. When we connect the computers, the signals from the antenna pass through the air. Since the RF signals travel through the air without any cables, there can be possible signal loss or weakening of signals. Obstacles on the way can stop the flow and strength of RF signals. Just as we've discussed earlier, even light is an electromagnetic wave. You would have seen how obstacles on the way can hinder the passage of light. Though the radio frequency signals cannot be seen, it can still be hindered by obstacles on the way. Metal parts, concrete walls, electronic equipments and even the human body can stop or weaken the radio frequency signals. Due to any such reasons, if the signal strength decreases, it will eventually cause the overall speed of the network to decrease. Have you ever wondered what are the causes responsible for the decreased speed of wireless internet? When we take wireless internet from an ISP, we very often will not get the speed that was offered by the service provider. In fact, it's the above set obstacles on the way that has caused the decreased speed. Though the speed is less in comparison to the wired networks, wireless networks can be set up very easily. Imagine that you are working in an office where you need to connect all your computers to a network. If you choose wired network, the cables may need to go through the walls. Wired networks take more time and money. Instead, if we set up a wireless network, it saves on time, labor and money. The communication in a wireless network is possible with the help of radio frequency signals. However, we are not allowed to use the RF signals in any frequency as we like. In order to get the authorization to use a particular frequency of radio frequency signals, it would cost anything from a thousand crores to two thousand crores. This investment is done against the exclusive permission to use a particular radio frequency. However, in order to realize the wireless communication, we still need to set up the network using costly wireless devices. If this is the case, to set up wireless connection between two computers in the same room or two different rooms in the same building, what will we do? Obviously, we will not go for wireless network due to the huge investment associated with acquisition of the license. However, there are three radio frequency bands that are available for anyone to use without registration. These frequency bands are also known as industrial, scientific and medical bands. ISM bands. ISM bands use the following frequencies 900 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. These three bands were released by the Federal Communication Commission FCC. As the name indicates anyone can use these frequency bands for various purposes. In addition to the computer networks Many other devices also use these frequencies. For example, microwave oven, cordless phones, medical equipments, etc. use these bands. That means the presence of any of these devices can create conflicts to affect the performance of our wireless networks. So far we've been discussing about the basic function of wireless network and the frequency used for it. Now let's proceed to learn about different types of wireless networks. Types of wireless networks Based on the size, wireless networks are divided into many categories. Wireless LAN, wireless MAN, wireless WAN, wireless PAN, etc. In addition to these, there are many other subcategories as well. Wireless LAN Wireless LAN is a network of two or more computers that covers only a limited area. If the LAN is too small, we can depend only on wireless network interface cards to make them work. Such devices which can communicate without a central device are also called as peer-to-peer -peer network. 
These kind of peer-to-peer -peer networks are also called as ad hoc network. By and large, such networks are set up only for temporary purposes. Normally, we would not require a coordinator when we discuss about anything with one or two people. Imagine there are 10 or 20 people participating in the discussion and if there is no coordinator, can you imagine what will be the destiny of that discussion? I hope you would have seen coordinators controlling discussions and talk shows on the television. Similarly, if there are only one or two computers, we can connect them directly as a peer-to-peer -peer network. However, when we increase the number of computers in the network, it would obviously necessitate the role of a coordinator. In case of wired networks, it's the switch that coordinates the communication, whereas in wireless network, the switch has been replaced by a device called access point. All computers in a wireless LAN communicate through the access point. Wireless LAN that are using access points are called as basic service set. Wireless Fidelity There are certain protocols and standards required to be followed by any network. For a wireless LAN to function, it uses the wireless fidelity, popularly known as Wi-Fi technology. In other words, Wi-Fi is the short form of wireless fidelity. While checking the configuration of a mobile phone, we usually check if it's got features like Wi-Fi, 3G or 4G. The interesting fact about the situation is that, though many people ask for these features, very often they don't even know what is meant by these features. Under Wi-Fi technology, wireless LAN transmits data with the help of radio frequency signals. The frequency of RF signals used in Wi-Fi technology can be either 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz. Hope you remember our discussions about ISM band. The range of such a wireless LAN is about 100 meters. Wi-Fi technology is widely used only in wireless LAN. Wi-Fi products are tested and certified by an organization named Wi-Fi Alliance. We can see their trademark in most of the Wi-Fi devices. IEEE standards There are various standards designed for different types of wireless networks. The Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers IEEE is the authority which determines and regulates various standards for the functioning of wireless networks. The network standards are mostly designed by 802 committee which is a part of the IEEE. For all the wireless network standards made by them, we can see their label IEEE 802. To support wireless LAN, they have designed the standard IEEE 802.11. It was only in 1997 that the first wireless LAN came into existence. The wireless LAN functioned under IEEE 802.11 standard and it used 2.4 gigahertz frequency. The maximum data transfer speed achieved by this standard was limited only up to 2 Mbps. This standard is now known as IEEE 802.11 Legacy. There were two new standards released in 1999. They are IEEE 802.11a and 11b. These standards in fact have come with many improvements from IEEE 802.11 Legacy. 802.11a used 5 GHz frequency and the maximum data transfer speed is 54 Mbps. Though it's faster than IEEE 802.11 Legacy, not many people prefer to use it. 802.11b, which has been released in the same year, gained more popularity. 802.11b used 2.4 GHz frequency and the maximum data transfer speed was up to 11 Mbps. Though the speed is lesser than IEEE 802.11a, the 802.11b earned more popularity since it has used 2.4 GHz frequency, the same frequency as the original standard IEEE 802.11 legacy. 
the new 802.11G with the original standard frequency of 2.4 GHz has been released in 2003. 11G standard has also offered the data transfer speed of up to 54 Mbps. 11G standard has been accepted widely and is still being used. However, IEEE has continued their research and improvement plan to design better and more efficient wireless network standards. 11N standard, which was released in 2009, offered enhanced speed of up to 300 Mbps. 11N standard is used in most of the new generation wireless networks. It can also function with both 2.4 GHz frequency and 5 GHz frequency. Considering the ongoing effort and research by IEEE, we can expect faster and efficient wireless network standards in the years to come. Wireless Security The safety and privacy that is offered by wired network is similar to a house with all doors locked and windows closed. However, wireless network is similar to a house with all doors and windows open. Compared to the wired network, there is increased risk of data loss transfer and hindrances of communication in wireless network. Moreover, anyone can easily hack the data from the wireless network in the absence of proper security measures. The RF signals traveling through the air can be intercepted by one using an antenna. Hence, there is a high risk of unauthorized access in wireless networks. In order to ensure a data security, we need to set up appropriate data security measures. Let's learn about three commonly used security systems. Wide Equivalent Privacy WEP, Wi-Fi Protected Access WPA and Wi-Fi Protected Access 2 WPA2. Wide Equivalent Privacy WEP. WEP Security Standard was released in 1997, the same year in which wireless LAN 802.11 legacy was released. WEP has been made with the realization that wireless LANs are not as safe as wired LAN. However, WEP has failed to serve its purpose since it has used an easily breakable encryption algorithm. Practically, WEP has failed to provide equivalent security to the wired network. Do you know what's meant by encryption algorithm? Imagine you have to share certain confidential information with someone. However, you do not want anyone else to understand what you are communicating with him. Under these circumstances, if there is a common language known to both of you only, obviously, you will use that particular language to communicate. Similarly, encryption refers to the technique of converting data in such a way that it's understood only by the sender and the receiver. Please bear in mind that it's a must to create a password while encrypting the data. The stronger the password, the better the security will be. Once encrypted, only with this password the data can be accessed and understood. The algorithm used in WEP was very weak. Hence, there was a compelling need to create an enhanced security method. Subsequently, in 2003, WPA was released. Wi-Fi Alliance has invented WPA security protocol. One of the basic motives behind launching WPA was to get rid of WEP. While upgrading to WPA, it was not required to replace any of the hardware parts. Instead, it required only firmware upgradation. WPA has used the TKIP algorithm. Though it offered better security compared to the web, WPA also has had some limitations, which in turn necessitated the invention of yet another wireless network security standard. In 2004, within one year after the release of WPA, Advanced Security Program WPA2 was released. Compared to its predecessors, the WPA2 offered superior security. WPA2 used an algorithm called Advanced Encryption Standard AES. Since it was successful in ensuring extended security, WPA2 had been widely used in most of the wireless LANs today. 
Since we have already learned about the wireless LANs and the various standards, security methods, etc., let's now get to know more about other wireless networks. WMAN WMAN is a collective unit of many wireless LANs located at various locations. The size of the WMAN can be in kilometers. Ideally, WMAN can connect many networks within the same city. WMAN uses worldwide interoperability for microwave access, popularly known as WiMAX technology. This technology is being controlled by an authority called WiMAX Forum. WiMAX technology can give up to 1 Gbps data transfer speed. WiMAX functions as per the IEEE design standard IEEE 802.16. Wireless WAN Wireless WAN is a network that is spread over a very large area. It connects many cities together. Mobile phones use wireless WAN to make the communication possible. We depend on a variety of technology to avail internet connectivity to mobile phones, tablets and similar other wireless devices. You must be familiar with 2G, 3G and 4G technology used for internet connectivity. The technology used in wireless vans are subdivided into many generations. They are 2nd generation 2G, 3rd generation 3G and 4th generation 4G. The analog communication system which was used before the emergence of the 2nd generation technology is known as 1G. It was in 1980 that the first generation wireless van technology came into existence. Most of the devices used by the people during 1980s were all analog devices. However, with the emergence of the second generation 2G, it also marked the beginning of the digital era. Examples of second generation technology are General Packet Radio Service GPRS, Enhanced Data Rate for GDM Evolution Edge, etc. With the emergence of third generation technology, wireless communication has gained better efficiency. 3G brought a technology 10 times faster than 2G. CDMA, UMTS, HSPA, HSPA+, etc. are some of the names that we can list for third generation technology 3G. The detailed lessons about the 3G technology will be covered under A+, N+, courses which are conducted here. With the emergence of the fourth generation, the data transfer speed of the wireless networks further increased. Mobile web, IP telephony, HD television, video conferencing, 3D television, etc. are some of the most advanced functions we can access without the use of cables. Long-term evolution, LTE, is an advanced feature of 4G. If LTE is used, speed will not be a challenge anymore in WAN. PAN What we've seen so far are comparatively larger wireless networks. The wireless networks that are used in a smaller distance are called as personal area network or PAN. The communication between a mobile phone and its Bluetooth headset is a typical example of PAN. Instead of keeping the phone close to the ear, many people prefer to use a Bluetooth device in the ear. The Bluetooth device helps them to communicate without keeping the phone close to the ears, so that they can simultaneously type a letter or perform any other task. This technology is especially useful for professionals who may need to multitask while at work. Bluetooth Bluetooth is the technology that is used to connect devices in a personal area without using cable. Bluetooth technology uses 2.4 GHz ISM band. Many companies like Ericsson, IBM, Intel, Nokia and Toshiba join hands to design the Bluetooth standard. If Bluetooth is used, we can communicate at a speed of up to 721 kbps. Normally, the connectivity range of a Bluetooth device is up to 10 meters. Though there are Bluetooth devices that can offer up to 100 meter range, they are not so popular. 
The wireless network is a branch of knowledge that grows so fast in a world where everybody wants to be independent. Of late, wireless devices are becoming way of life for the new generation since it lets them have internet connectivity, voice communication and video conferencing wherever they go. In short, people are connected even when they are traveling. Since everybody appreciates the freedom of wireless devices, more and more people prefer wireless networks so that they can be free from the bondage and limitation of the wired devices and wired networks. No doubt, you will definitely appreciate this innovative change and this great technology. We now conclude this brief discussion about the history and technology of wireless networks. Goodbye and see you soon with yet another topic.